Here's what's coming up on your horizon. So what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, that may well be a question some of us are still asking ourselves. But a growing number of students are getting on what is called a career pathway at an earlier and earlier age. I love it. It's just, I've, I've wanted to be an engineer for a long, long time. We'll meet some very ambitious young people already accomplishing some very big things. Um, I think research is an amazing field. There's so many opportunities. Also today, do you feel cyber safe? Well, you may not after we show you just how frequent and expensive cyber attacks are. We'll examine the problem and look at the work underway to keep sensitive data out of the wrong hands. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. Oklahoma's investment in career tech provides more than nationally recognized technology education and training. It produces solid financial returns for the state's economic future. Oklahoma Career Tech, elevating our economy. And the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. And now, from the Career Tech Studios in Stillwater, here's your host, Rob McClendon. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. Well, among the 34 leading industrialized countries, U.S. educational outcomes are falling behind. Currently, U.S. students rank 14th in reading literacy, 17th in science, and 25th in math. So it should come as no surprise that the U.S. has fallen from number one in the world in the percentage of young adults with college degrees down all the way to number 10. Now this at a time when 90% of the jobs in the fastest growing occupations require post-secondary education and skills training. A push is underway in Oklahoma to get students working towards a future career at an earlier age though. It's called a career pathway and something our Lisa Hines says could help America stay competitive in a global economy. You've heard of the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. But how about the three C's, college, career, and citizen ready? That's what a new initiative at Duncan Public Schools is striving to do by making the connection between school and work. Give Jack Hicks a screwdriver and a computer and he'll figure out how to put whatever he's working on together. I like just building stuff, creating stuff on the computer. Just, it's pretty much everything about it. And his STEM class is confirming what Jack already knows, that he wants to be an engineer. It helped a lot. <laughs> I love it. It's just, I've, I've wanted to be an engineer for a long, long time. And then you're going to put your shaft through that gear. So you've got According to Jack's thing, teacher, kind of Tammy Bennett, that's what a new side. initiative at Duncan Public that. Schools is all about, getting kids interested in a career pathway at an early age. We are actually pulling in careers into the educational process of teaching these guys about what's out there in the near future for them. Uh, not necessarily have to go to college for, but some of the actual higher paying jobs that can come from just careers in general. Superintendent Sherry Labier says they're helping students connect the dots. Career Pathways in Duncan Schools is a brand new initiative that we started this year. And it is not a program. It is not a canned program. It is an initiative that Duncan Schools has started down on a journey so that we help students make the connection between what they're doing in the classroom and the world of work. College, career, and citizen ready is what we're trying to help them make the connection through Career Pathways. Allison Wilcox says knowing what classes to take is preparing her for college. Really, I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do as far as a degree and after high school and stuff, but it helped really narrow and specify what I was going to do instead of I want to go into business and then go to law school, but it helped me um, know what I needed to get into law school and what 
degree would help me get there and what specific business degree would help me get there. Career counselor Lauren Hackler says using a statewide online database, she can give students a reality check. I try to incorporate the different career pathways using OKCIS mostly in our class. Um, we investigate different industries and where the greatest needs are right now and that's obviously in the STEM um, industries and we just try to talk about you know what kind of lifestyle do you want to be able to live and will you be able to maintain that lifestyle with the salary you'll be able to earn in that industry. And Sherry says Career Pathways help students not only set goals but show them how to get there. Our goal by the time a student graduates starting in the eighth grade that they have built a portfolio that in turn helps them channel the classes that they take for the time that they're with us. And we cannot pigeonhole them. That's never ever our intent. And so they are seeing the connection between what's happening now to what I need to be doing next year and the next year and the next year. And the students are feeling more secure in the decisions that they're making. Decisions that for David Carter are easy to make. I had a pretty good idea going into this year what I wanted to do, but with the career pathways and everything really helped me narrow down what schools actually offer that and where I can go, how much it costs, things like that, what I'm actually going to be taking to get that degree. And that's what Sherry is hoping for. Students looking at their future and making informed decisions. My passion is students. My passion is student success. And what works hand in hand with that passion is that when students leave Duncan schools and they graduate, that we've made a difference beyond 12th grade. I want them to be able to say when they walk out of Duncan schools, they've helped me with a plan, they've helped me down the road, and that my journey could be a little bit easier because I know what I need to do to fulfill my career plans and make myself a better citizen. We want them to stay in Oklahoma. That's very, very important. But my passion is that we help students beyond 12th grade because they have a lot more time in their career than they did with the short time that we have with them. And I want them to look back and say that we made a difference in their future. She had smaller hands. Now this initiative involves local government, the Career Tech Center, and economic development groups. Teachers even work with business and industry to figure out what jobs are available in the local area to use in their classrooms, helping students make the connection between school and work on a daily basis. And just as Elisa said, these efforts do have the backing of the business community, wanting to ensure a steady pipeline of productive employees. When we return, success at an early age. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon, featuring some of the good things that are happening in the great state of Oklahoma. Well, a career tech science program for girls helped start one Oklahoma student's journey to a career in fighting diseases. Joining me now with her story is our Andy Barth. Well, Rob, many students prepare for college by taking advanced placement courses while still in high school. But we caught up with one Oklahoma student who has gone above and beyond to prepare for her college and career. From lab rats to test tubes, some of today's greatest discoveries happen in university laboratories, a place where theories are tested and young scientists emerge. I love learning. Nicole Bibinger is ending her second summer working in the OSU lab and hopes to study science that helps others. I would like to pursue research possibly for the uh, Center for Disease Control in Atlanta or the National Institutes of Health. While Bidinger has college lab experience, she's just now beginning her college career. She started when she was only a junior in high school. She operates at the level, uh, you know, way beyond her uh, age. Very responsible in doing lab work. Okay. Dr. Puni Jayasing is an assistant professor in OSU's Department of Zoology and says Bittinger is a natural. I often worry, even with undergrad, 
uh, assistance. I don't want him go unsupervised uh, as much as I have let Nicole because I feel very comfortable because she's made out to be a very meticulous scientist, I can tell. <laughs> and for Bittinger, the sky is the limit. Um, I think research is an amazing field. There's so many opportunities and I want to be able to potentially uh, look for cures for certain diseases. A love for science with deep roots in career tech. Career tech was amazing for me. It got me thinking on an entirely different level. Being able to read through papers of other scientists and then and take those principles and concepts and apply it to my own research has been really interesting uh, because there's so much knowledge out there. And so uh, applying that to my own work and um, learning all of the different techniques and how to work in the lab has been really great. Well, now Nicole's work includes working with marine organisms to try to see how they tolerate extreme temperatures, with hopes to someday link those results to humans. And when those results are published from her work at OSU, she will be listed as first author in scientific journals, all from work she started as a junior in high school while attending career tech. So what is next for Nicole Andy? Well, Rob, she just moved to Indiana and is going to attend Purdue University and eventually hopes to work for the Center for Disease Control to help find cures for some dangerous diseases. All right, such an impressive young lady. Thanks so much, Andy. You're welcome, Rob. Well, while students like Nicole are certainly exceptional, they're not alone when you take the broader view. Several countries already fast track students toward careers in a jobs race that has global implications. If you'd like to see just how fierce the competition is, we have an interesting feature running on our website that contrasts students preparing in this country with work underway in China and in India. Just go to our value added section on our website and click on two million minutes. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, high paying jobs in cybersecurity. But first, a modern day battlefield. Well, chances are someone from somewhere is attacking our country right now. That's because modern day battle lines are increasingly lines of digital code. A confidential Pentagon report reveals Chinese hackers have already compromised some of America's most sensitive weapons systems. And this isn't a brand new threat, but rather part of a bigger trend. The federal government suffered nearly a 680% increase in cybersecurity breaches in just the past six years, and you're paying for it. So let's face the facts. Little things can sometimes seem harmless, but some little things can grow to be very big problems. Here's the fact. Federal cybersecurity breaches have grown 680% in the last six years. That's 117 hacks a day. And with hackers currently accessing our bank records, including one incident involving children's health insurance plans that expose social security numbers, things like identity theft are an increasing problem. Breaches have even come close to compromising control of the International Space Station. And shutting down our power grid is not out of reach. So if they can do all that, what else might they be able to gain access to? How did the $13 billion spent in 2011 protect us? How much more will it cost to stay one step ahead? Explore more at facethefactsusa.org. Now this is a war being waged in both directions. The August issue of Wired magazine details work by U.S. operatives to stymie Iran's nuclear weapons development. It's estimated that as many as 14,000 U.S. troops and security personnel are involved in cyber warfare. You can keep up with us throughout the week. Just head to OKHorizon.com where you can see more of any of our stories, read our reporters' behind-the-scenes blogs, see what others are saying about us on Twitter, and face the facts with our regular updates. So reach out and touch us anywhere and anytime. Well, while foreign governments may be interested in cyber espionage, others are just wanting into our pocketbooks. Estimates are cybercrime could cost Americans between 25 and 100 billion dollars each and every year. When you add up everything from draining people's bank accounts to the theft of intellectual property. Now, no one is safe, especially an entity as big as state government. As OETA Steve Bennett shows us, protecting Oklahoma's digital security is one large undertaking. President Barack Obama made cybersecurity a top priority in his State of the Union address. 
noting that criminals are hacking into information systems to steal people's identities, while foreign governments and companies are stealing corporate and government secrets. Now our enemies are also seeking the ability to sabotage our power grid, our financial institutions, our air traffic control systems. We cannot look back years from now and wonder why we did nothing in the face of real threats to our security and our economy. Mark Gower is the head of information security for the state of Oklahoma. Gower says hackers are constantly trying to exploit holes in computer information systems. The state network is always under attack. Um, we can pretty much assume that someone is always testing the limits, someone is always testing the boundaries and testing our systems. Hackers are also sharpening their skills, making it more difficult to uncover attacks. When they try to disguise their activity, uh, it looks more legitimate in today's environment. So we have to stay well trained, have to have our technology up to the topest level that we can do, and then be able to identify these through all of our proactive measures as possible rather than reactive. To combat the threat, Oklahoma has created the State Security Operations Center. Experts here watch over Oklahoma's information network, looking for evidence of hacking and information theft. Gower says the center provides protection to more than 80% of state computers. So that we brought everybody up to a basic level of security where those endpoints have antivirus, any malware, any spam, and what is called intrusion detection, intrusion prevention on the actual system itself. And then those systems then report their activity back to the state security operations center so we can identify behaviors and attack vectors and signatures. Combating those attacks has become a growth industry in Oklahoma. Colleges and universities are offering courses in cybersecurity. Dr. Cheryl Hale is co-founder of the Cybersecurity Education Consortium, or CSEC. And the primary goal of that consortium is really to create a cadre of highly skilled cybersecurity specialists. Students don't necessarily have to have a background in computers. Francis Tuttle Technology Center in Oklahoma City offers courses in cybersecurity and continuing education for instructors. Greg Porter is an instructor there. Uh, you need to have an analytical mind. You have to be able to solve problems. If you like solving problems, this is the right field for you. Uh, I love solving problems and, and figuring out how things work. Uh, but as far as a, a, a strong background, not necessarily. Keeping ahead of the bad guys is always a challenge. That's why Porter and other instructors take classes themselves to stay up on new developments in cybersecurity. For every person that's trying to secure systems, there's probably a thousand people trying to get in. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's kind of like keeping out the barbarian hordes, you know, you're, you're on manning the, the walls. Uh, so, yeah, it, it is a challenge. Don Lawrence is an instructor at Tulsa Technology Center. He says continuing education is vital. Because as cybersecurity gets good, so do the hackers. And essentially, as they get one step on us, we have to come back and, and increase the game as well. So, so it's always going to be moving back and forth. Cyber attacks can be very sophisticated, but systems can also be compromised by simple means. Organizations have been hacked by dropping a CD or a thumb drive where someone will find it and plug it in to see what's on it. That was the way that the Iranian nuclear facility was penetrated, was that essentially a flash drive was left that the engineers plugged into their systems and compromised the entire Iranian nuclear facility based on the fact that somebody left that Stuxnet virus, that Stuxnet worm, on a flash drive. The concern for most Oklahomans isn't terrorists or foreign governments. It's criminals who are after personal information or hackers who take over home computers to create an army of zombie machines. A lot of these criminal organizations are actually running botnets of home consumers' computers to attack businesses and, and government entities. So you actually play a, a part in our national security just by keeping up your, your, your computer at home. While there's no way to guarantee you won't be hacked, there are steps you can take to lessen the chances Security experts say using a firewall and installing and updating antivirus software is the best way to prevent your personal computer from becoming a target for hackers. Want to share something you've seen here today? Well, all of our episodes are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV. Or you can subscribe to our weekly free podcast on iTunes. 
Well, as we said at the top of today's show, if there is a silver lining in the dark cloud of cybercrime, it's cybersecurity jobs. The demand for such professionals just continues to grow. Arkela Kellen visited a classroom where law enforcement has gone digital. It's incredible just how far technology has come. Cell phones that were once just used for talking are now little handheld computers that also hold all of your personal information, which is why thieves are constantly trying to crack into them. I visited a class where students are working to stay a step ahead of the bad guys. Learning to take apart computers and understanding how they work is what students are able to achieve in a class designed to teach cybersecurity. I'm an instructor at Meridian Technology Center. Uh, we teach um, cybersecurity, which uh, basically with uh, PC essentials, computer repair, uh, networking, and um, some computer forensics. While he is new to the teaching environment, cybersecurity and computer forensics is something less little knows quite well. I was a Stillwater police officer for 23 years. The last 16 years I was in detectives and CID. Um, I worked uh, crimes against people and I worked computer crimes, which I was a part of the ICAC task force, which is Internet Crimes Against Children. And so that got me into computer forensics. And uh, we always kind of had a working partnership with Meridian whenever they purchased a uh, forensic uh, evidence recovery device, which is called a FRED. We, you know, came out to look at it and we kind of worked with them a little bit on that. And, you know, we were able to, you know, share some ideas and some equipment and, you know, had ideas with them. And that's how we got started. Knowing how to fight crimes while teaching students how to do the same. The, the students here, they come in at all different levels. So uh, we have first year students, second year students, and third year students. It's really a three year program. Um, the first year is PC repair, the PC essentials. Um, second year is networking. Third year is more of uh, the cybersecurity, which is the computer forensics built into that. And the cybersecurity is more like whenever you use that, it's from the very beginning, you secure your password. Then you secure your home network, and then you secure your, um, uh, you know, your PC at home. And it builds all the way up to where you're networking, and you're doing a network computer, and then you're all the way to a server that you would be using at a business. Learning a valuable trade that will surely pay off in today's technology-driven world. The program is a great program from just somebody that doesn't know a thing. We've had students come in that have no computer knowledge at all. They barely know how to type. And whenever they start here, uh, they learn the basics of the computer themselves. We also go through and we teach them life skills and we build on that also, you know, how to fill out a resume and how to, you know, communicate with other people. Some people come in and can't talk. So part of the curriculum too is, is we build that up in those people. We get them ready for the workforce and we're getting them ready for the real world. So this class basically, it, it's what you put into it is what you're going to get out. So if you put a lot of work into it, you're going to come out on top. All right, you go. With the IT field changing so dramatically, the need for cyber protection on the legal and corporate side is growing. In the last five years, the listings for cybersecurity positions has risen 73%, making it one of the most in-demand careers, which is providing good job opportunities for graduates of the program. Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, things are heating up in the debate over climate change, and Oklahoma farmers are in the middle of it. We can't pick and choose the science we want. If science tells us that we've got a challenge, then we've got to recognize that. And we've also got to realize that sticking our head in the sand is not of a benefit to our industry that is so tied to the land just by the fact of what we do. We need to be thinking about how do you adapt to that. Global warming, fact or fiction, on Oklahoma Show for the Heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. Well, when it comes to cybersecurity and our national security, no one in recent memory has brought the issue more to the forefront than a low-level analyst at the National Security Agency named Edward Snowden. Snowden thrust himself into the limelight when he leaked NSA surveillance secrets, a move characterized as treasonous by some and patriotic by others. Yet despite what you think of his actions, I was struck by a single fact typically glossed over in most reports. By all accounts, Edward Snowden was a homegrown computer geek who never finished high school, yet had the skills to land a job with a top security clearance that paid $122,000 a year. 
Not bad money for a 20-something without a degree. I recently visited with a supervisor at one of the state's largest computer companies, and according to him, he's constantly interviewing the tech savvy, trying to find employees. Not just for cybersecurity jobs, but a myriad of other computer jobs. Now, the jobs of the 21st century are becoming more specialized and more technical. In fact, there are three million jobs going unfilled in this country today because there aren't enough qualified candidates. And if the laws of supply and demand hold true, those with the right skills should reap the rewards in an ever-growing digital economy. I'm Rob McClendon. Thanks for watching. See you back here next week. Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education and the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. Thank you for watching Oklahoma Horizon.